Island's guidance counselors are expressing frustration that they are unable to effectively help students navigate social issues and improve their general well-being because of a high counselor to pupil ratio in the nation's schools. Joining us this morning to share her insight on the matter is the Jamaica Association of Guidance Counselors in Education President and Angelica Dalrymple. Good morning. Good Welcome morning, to Smile Good Jamaica. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on behalf of the association. Yeah, man. Before we go to the numbers, um, because now you're hearing about mental issues with young people and all kinds of stuff, are guidance counselors trained to deal with all of these issues? I mean, I know you, you, you know, you're close to a bad in school or you have a little fight and you go to the guidance council. I can understand that. But from what we are hearing now and these, we call them psychosocial issues, mm -hmm. are guidance counselors trained for that? I'm glad you asked because you give me an opportunity to let you know that guidance counselors are not trained to be nurses. They are not trained to be ambulance drivers. They are not trained to be doing many of the things that are imposed on them. And as such, they're operating, they're forced to be operating outside of their competence. They are trained as guidance counselors as it relates to the mental, social, and emotional health development of the children. Okay. Mm. okay. Uh, just following up on that, it, it would, as never said, I mean, when we were in school, we went to the guidance counselor for yeah. what may seem trivial now, then it wasn't. Um, now you're dealing with grief counseling, you're dealing with assault cases it's become a little bit more. I think one of the things he's asking is, um, how equipped are you in the schools to, to deal with this change in society and all the things that are affecting our children? The fact is guidance counselors don't only counsel like for emotional um, traumas okay. in full, so to speak. We refer, so oh. whatever come, whatever comes to us, mm -hmm. and if it is something that is beyond us, even in relation to the numbers, mm -hmm. we will refer. Okay. However, it is just too much. Mm. Too much on every spectrum. All right, so tell us what is too much. What is the ratio at the moment? The ratio at the moment, I'm looking at one of the best we have. It's like 100, 1,453 guidance counselors. That is over 400 and about 80 something um, students to one counselor. And that's the best ratio? And that's the have? best. We have counselor, we have one counselor to 1,200. 1,180, we have the plain data, you know, to show that one counselor to that number of students. And our counselors are, are, are crying out for compassionate fatigue because it is too much, the burden is just too much. And as you just said, the increasing rate of the emotional challenges are just too much. Oh. Let me play devil's advocate, even though me and the devil is not my friend, but let me play the advocate here. You say one in 1,400. Mm -hmm. That almost sounds like it's 1,400 people in the school giving problems. But how many students would a guidance counselor be asked to see for a week, say, say for a week? Okay, that question is technical. And why it is technical? Because the guidance counselors are responsible for all the students in the school. Students will have different kind of challenges. So remember, we are there primarily outside of these emotional and, and trauma and these grief and all of that. We are there to help the students to connect to their education. Sorry to jump in, ma'am, but I'm suggesting that it wouldn't be 1,400 kids that would have challenges, which is what I'm suggesting. Well, I'm, I'm saying that, but I'm saying that there are different areas of health Help. So the challenges that you may be thinking of in terms of emotional unwellness, all children may not have that. However, we are responsible for helping them connecting to their education, their career development. So there are other programs that are in the school that are to be done outside of this kind of nature of okay. thing that comes to us. Yeah. It, so, so, um, and I think that's a part of the challenge that you're having, Angelica. Um, because when I speak to guidance counselors, they have a class that they have to conduct with students. That's the guidance aspect of it. Yes, so they have the class. They're organizing a career development fairs, workshops, mm -hmm. Everything. PTA events. So it's, it's a whole slate of activities on top of when things pop up exactly. in the school. What would be an ideal ratio? for you? I think right now, although I would prefer to, for it to be less, but I think 200 
could be something that could be worked with. Okay. Because also, not only the number of students, but then the kind of resources that many counselors have to be working with. We have counselors in just a cubicle, maybe with some school that may have a nurse, with the nurse and the, the area where the children, if they get ill, you know, the mm -hmm. sick bay, they call it, so that when there is a case that we would regard private, the others have to step out just for that counselor to do what has to be done. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the fact that the burden of this, the numbers are too much, then the resources that they are working with really cause this kind of challenge. And you have to do home visits as well when required? Of course we have to do home visits. Mm -hmm. You said, what Dela, for Dela question, you said that's the guidance part. Yes, the gui it's called the guidance counseling and, counseling. and counseling. Right, so guidance, we have to do classroom guidance. Like we go into the classroom and you, we call, you may call it teach, but we call it guidance. So we have sessions that we have to do, must do. And now we have the counseling aspect. And the sex, the, those sessions would focus on what? Lifestyle, life skills, and so forth. We call that the preventive um, aspect of it, although sometimes we might use it for intervention, you know, in the, in the situation. But however, you know, the guidance policy that was launched in 2016 indicated that the guidance council should have at least 80% of their time for the counseling. That cannot happen. Yeah. Is there a rule, law, uh, legislation that every school needs a guidance council? It, the, the school has to have a guidance council? Yes. We have a policy, this guidance counseling policy, and not only that, there's a need for guidance counseling in all schools, because remember, the schools are not just academic driven in the context that you talk about math, English. The children are humans. Mm. They have emotions. And not only that, in our country today, in our context today, the kind of trauma, almost all our students are traumatized for some reason. Teachers are traumatized, you and I are traumatized. Mm -hmm. Our country imposes that on us. And as a result, our children need much more. What do you mean by our country imposes that on us? What the kind mean? of violence and cruelty that happen in our country with our children, to our children. Mm -hmm. Children are crying for their friends. Children are crying for their parents. Children are not overcoming some of the challenges that they have when they're coming to school and so forth and so on. It's a lot. Mm. It's also a lot, I feel, for the guidance counselors themselves because they also live in this society and they're experiencing trauma. Um, what kind of support is there for the guidance counselor? Who counsels the counselor? Well, look, the, the, so the guidance counselor association, we have just come out of a conference. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we try to do is to have self-care sessions. We try to sharpen their skills. So we all sharpen our skills together and we have self-care sessions for them. We acknowledge them so that they can feel this sense of worth, you know, mm -hmm. and then be encouraged to move on. But we need just more. We need the ministry to find some means of way to give more self-care to our guidance counselors so that they can even have um, the way or the opportunity to have some kind of, um, I would say, psychiatry, psychologist or something that they can go to without going into their pockets. We need this kind of provision. Again, in a response to one of Delia's questions, you said that the guidance counselor goes into a class, so they have a, a, a session. Forgive my ignorance, but do you need to be a teacher to be a counselor? Do you need to be a counselor first, then teacher? Well, guidance counselors in education are trained in methodology as teachers do. Okay. The only difference is that we specialize in guidance. So how do you get more people involved in this? In guidance counseling, there are a lot of counselors who have no job in Jamaica. But if you just said we need them in the schools, why aren't they? We need them to be employed in the schools, the government to employ them so in the schools. why are they not there? Because they're not employed. Because, because, for example, a school may need two or three guidance counselors, but the ministry may just provide one or two or four. When you say the ministry will just provide, so if I run a school, I have 1,400 kids and I only have one, and somebody comes and I say, I need four more guidance counselors. Who is going to pay? So the school can't say, well, I need two or three more. You can say, but who is going to pay? So how does it work? I would think just like the school needs teachers and they ask for the teachers and the ministry provide the resources for the teachers, it's the same way. Um, so, they, so it has to be approved? It has to be ministry. approved by the ministry. So okay. I, I know this was just on the weekend, but have you gotten any kind of feedback from 
your counselors from the ministry, anybody saying, well, okay, Angelica, we're hearing you. Let's see what's possible. Oh, my team is behind me. Okay. The guidance counselors are behind me. Even yesterday, we had information from them because I like rich current information and we have information from them. Mm -hmm. There is a counselor who actually took a child who was having a panic attack mm -hmm. and the child was given to the counselor to take to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, the child was gasping for breath. There was no one else to assist in that context and the, 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 the counselor was overwhelmed mm -hmm. because these things are for nurses. The counselor could not do anything but just drive. Mm -hmm. And while the counselor is driving, the child is gasping for breath. Mm -hmm. That is dramatic. How many counselors in the association? Uh, we have, currently we have over 300. Wow. Only 300? Yes. And almost about 200 high schools mm. alone. That's high schools right. alone. That's right. Thanks for coming in. I hope it works out. Uh, uh, we, we need you. We need you. All the best for the holiday season to you Thank and your family. Thank you so very much. I yep. hope someone hears us. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jamaica Association of Guidance Counselors President, of Guidance Counselors in Education President Angelica Dalrymple. Yeah. Coming up next, how are we offering support to those living with HIV? We have that discussion for you after the break.